Welcome to the Vintage Hollywood Archive. Taking on a variety of roles from hooker to housewife for 45 years, the name Donna Reed stood for a delicate, feminine character in the late 1940s Hollywood. But in real life, she remained a smart, outspoken lady who held the Protestant work ethic she had learned on the farm in Denison, Iowa. Why was Donna Reed blamed by Jimmy Stewart? Make sure to watch the video until the end. And if you are new here, don't forget to join our wonderful community by subscribing to the Vintage Hollywood Archive channel. Every other young person in the early 1960s was a fan of Donna Reed. To youthful, impressionable eyes in those pre-feminist times, she appeared to be the ideal mother and wife. She was certainly attractive, but there was more to her than just looks. It was her inner wisdom and peace. Beyond her beautiful grin, you could sense her strength and principle, and that's what made her even more beautiful. People know her as a good girl, but do you know that she won an Academy Award for playing a bad girl, a Pearl Harbor bar hostess? Yes, a good girl of mostly forgettable films had this amazing talent of fitting perfectly into different roles. After contacting with MGM in 1941, Reed developed a specialty for girl next door roles. She kept winning major roles one after another in the 1940s, but not without facing some challenges in her professional and personal life. After some major roles, she starred in her own ABC sitcom between 1958 and 1966. After disappearing from the public eye when the Donna Reed show was canceled, the actress made a comeback in 1984 to take Barbara Bell Jed's place for a season on the ABC primetime series opera, Dallas. Her biggest achievement included an Academy Award in 1953 and 10 years later, the Golden Globe for Best TV Star. But the most unfortunate day for her admirers came in early 1986 when the most talented and the most beautiful Donna Reed passed away due to pancreatic cancer. The reassessment of It's a Wonderful Life improved Reed's posthumous Hollywood reputation, bringing in new admirers to her iconic performance and enhancing their appreciation of her rare combination of beauty, intelligence, and unflappable grace. She remained a culture symbol throughout her life as the girl next door, pinup, and all-American mother. Indeed, her achievements are remarkable, but how can we expect a smooth journey in Hollywood? Yes, she also faced failures like every other star. But do you know what was different in her story? It was the way her flops turned out to be her biggest success. How? By the end of this video, you will find out all the answers. So stay here and keep watching to know everything about Donna Reed's interesting journey. The oldest of five children, Donna Reed was born in an Iowa farming family in 1921 and her initial goal was not to become an actor. Actually, she wanted to become a teacher when she was a high school student, but she couldn't afford it. She eventually enrolled at Los Angeles City College, where she participated in a number of plays despite not having any plans to pursue an acting career. No matter what we plan, when something is really meant for us, it makes its way towards us. And that's what happened to Reed in 1941, when a talent scout was drawn to her breathtaking beauty and she was signed to MGM. There, Donna Reed finally replaced Donna Mullinger as her name. A few years later, she was cast in major films, They Were Expendable, by John Ford and The Picture of Dorian Gray, by Albert Lewin, giving her career a big boost in 1945. During that period, things were also working well in her personal life. As Reed was married to makeup artist William Tuttle from 1943 to 1945, then Reed married producer Tony Owens after getting a quick divorce and the two had four children together, Penny Jane, Anthony, Timothy, and Mary Ann. Two of the older kids were adopted. Her career was at its peak when she caught Frank Capra's eye due to her performance as a brave Navy nurse in John Ford's They Were Expendable, and he teamed her with James Stewart in It's a Wonderful Life. The short story and booklet, The Greatest Gift, which was the inspiration for the movie, was itself partially based on Charles Dickens' A Christmas Carol. Donna portrayed Mary Hatch, George Bailey's wife, and childhood sweetheart. 
James Stewart, a legendary actor in Hollywood, plays the suicidal businessman George Bailey. George receives assistance from Clarence, an angel, who also portrays what life should have been like if he had not been born. She displays her talent in the well-known scene where Stewart's character, George Bailey, finally gives up on his love for Reed's role, Mary Hatch, in which they share a telephone mouthpiece. The film has received five Academy Award nominations, is regarded as one of the all-time great movies, and was named one of the top 100 American films ever created by the American Film Institute. But there is something more interesting than its success. The first thing was that Reed was not the first choice of Capra for It's a Wonderful Life. Jean Arthur and Ginger Rogers were the first actresses Capra preferred for the part of Mary Hatch, the devoted wife of James Stewart's hounded small-town hero. Capra asked MGM to loan Reed to RKO Radio Pictures after both women turned him down, claiming the role was not dynamically suitable to their star status. Eventually, Reed turned out to be the perfect fit for the role the movie would naturally go on to become an endearing Christmas classic. But this success was not just that simple. Although it's a holiday ritual for many families to watch this film, did you know that it was a box office flop when it first came out? Yes, you heard that right. At the box office, the movie lost $525,000, and until at least 1974, it was mostly forgotten. It's a Wonderful Life then entered the public domain due to the studio's inability to renew its copyright, allowing any TV station to broadcast it without charge. They carried it out during the Christmas season, which is when it was discovered and turned into a seasonal classic by the world. And despite the movie's early difficulties, it eventually became a hit. There are three colorized variants available. It has been transformed into theater production, musicals, and radio plays. A rumored sequel was also in production and slated to release in 2015, but Paramount refused to give the project the go-ahead, and no more development plans have been made since. However, the initial failure leads to another whole new story. It actually induced arguments among the cast. The failure of the movie actually made James Stewart decide he would never again want to work with Donna Reed. It sounds insane, right? Do you think its failure had anything to do with Reed's performance? Well, Reed gave an outstanding performance, but the problem was actually the movie's plot. Although the movie's plot appealed to viewers today, it did not do so in the past. Regardless, Stewart blamed the failure of the film on Reed. So, in the Stratton story, she had been paired with Van Johnson in 1949, but when Johnson was swapped out for James Stewart, the producer dropped Reed because Stewart didn't want to work with Reed. Years later, Mary Ann Reed, Miss Reed's daughter, talked about the matter and stated, I don't like to mention this, but Capra and Jimmy Stewart had this whole success together before the war with Mr. Smith goes to Washington, and all of that. Everyone participated in the war effort, but especially those two, and they were gone from Hollywood for four or five years. There was a lot of insecurity on the set because Jimmy Stewart wasn't sure if he wanted to act anymore. He thought it was too frivolous, but Lionel Barrymore and others talked him into it. In order to serve in World War II, Stewart became the first American movie star to enroll in the U.S. Army. He thought about going back to Pennsylvania to manage the family business after his wartime adventures, but he was convinced to stay. Marianne added, so there was this insecurity on the set, and Mum was really not that well known. I mean, she was only 25 and I think signed her MGM contract at 21. But she still didn't understand why there was so much insecurity, and then Jimmy Stewart couldn't understand why the movie didn't do well, but that's why they never did another movie together. He blamed her because she wasn't as well known. Marianne concluded her mother was quite happy with the film. She said, by the early 80s, it was on constantly and we always watched at Christmas. She was so happy that it was so popular. Whatever Stewart believed, but we do believe that Reed is one of the reasons for the movie's success, not failure. In 1949, she again proved her talent in the Chicago Deadline at Paramount Pictures by playing attractive murder victim Rosita Dior, whose tragic story is brought to light via the suffering of reporter Alan Ladd. 
She was cast by Columbian Pictures and starred a shrewd newspaper reporter in Phil Carlson's Scandal Sheets, assisting colleague John Derrick in exposing Manhattan's Lonely Heart Killer as their own editor-in-chief, Roger Crawford. In the swashbuckler Raids of the Seven Seas, Reed was miscast as the aristocratic lover of pirate John Payne, but her career-changing part was yet to come. As the 1950s rolled around, Donna continued to be busy, but was increasingly unhappy at having portrayed the good girl in generally unforgettable movies. Donna Reed developed a reputation as a troublemaker early on in her career within Hollywood studio systems, despite having serenely attractive looks. She voiced her dissatisfaction to Louis B. Mayers, her boss at MGM, about being cast as Mickey Rooney's sweetheart in Andy Hardy movies. However, she had no better luck at Columbia until she got the role of a bad girl. That is how she got the opportunity to co-star in Fred Zineman's adaptation of James Bond's best-selling novel, From Here to Eternity, in 1953. As a Pearl Harbor bar hostess who falls in love with enlisted man Montgomery Clift, just before the Japanese onslaught, she would finally get to portray a bad girl this time around. Eight Oscars were awarded to the picture, including Best Supporting Actress for Donna. She kept working on films, but Donna and her producer husband, Tony Owen, believed that television was the way of the future. Finally, they established their own production film, which led to the 1958 debut of The Donna Reed Show. Donna represented Donna Stone, the aforementioned perfect mother and wife who manages to deal with any issues her family may have. Her on-screen family included Paul Peterson as their younger son and Shelley Faberis as their adolescent daughter. Carl Betts played Donna's pediatrician husband. The show had a remarkable nine seasons. Donna gave herself and her family some space after the show was canceled. Reed, who was well known for her reputation of middle-class Americans, shocked her admirers by coming out as one of the first opponents of the Vietnam War. She played a significant part in an organization named Another Mother for Peace in 1967. She said, I love my country, but I feel it got off track. This is my way of helping it find its way back. In addition, she was a pioneering supporter of women's rights. By referring to the majority of directors as incompetent who hated women, she infuriated them by saying that this is why they make their female roles as disagreeable as possible. She also got a divorce from Toei Owens in 1971 after 25 years of marriage. She would remarry three years later to Grover Asmus, a retired army colonel. By the end of the 1970s, Donna was eager to resume her career and began appearing in TV guest spots. She played a lonely widow in the NBC telefilm The Best Place to Be in 1979, which made her first tentative steps towards a new beginning. She portrayed the dictatorial and dubious headmistress of a prestigious finishing school beset by serial killer in ABC's Deadly Lessons. Reed made an appearance in a two-hour special edition of The Love Boat in February 1984. Reed was chosen to take Barbara Bell Geed's place in the hugely popular TV show Dallas in 1984, but was unexpectedly let go after one season when Bell Geed's decided to come back. Donna filed a claim for breach of contract against CBS right away. The case was ultimately settled out of court, reportedly for seven figures. Sadly, she would not be able to make use of the money because she had been given a pancreatic cancer diagnosis and she left this world in January 1986, just a few days shy of turning 65. It was rather like losing a family member for those of us who had grown up watching her portray Donna Stone. After her death, the Donna Reed Foundation for the Performing Arts was established by Grover Asmus, Reed's husband, the actors Shelby Faberes, and Norma Conley, as well as a large number of friends, colleagues, and family members. The Donna Reed Festival is held each year in Denson, Ohio, the hometown of Reed. On Donna Reed Drive in Denson, Reed's childhood home stood but was destroyed by fire in 1983. In Denson, Iowa, at the W.A. McHenry Museum House, Reed's Academy Award is on display. Donna Reed is recognized as a star at 1610 Vine Street on the Hollywood Walk of Fame for her work in the film industry. Reed was chosen by Turner Classic Movies as their Star of the Month for May 2010, and Mary Owens paid a special homage to her mother during the presentation.
actress Shelley Faberge, who portrayed Mary Stone on The Donna Reed Show, said in a 2011 Los Angeles Times story, Donna Reed definitely became my second mother. She was a role model and remains so to this day. I still periodically hear her voice in my head, where I am making a decision about doing something. I hear her urge me to make the stronger decision of the two. I just adore her. Today's generation knows her as Jimmy Stewart's devoted wife in the frequently seen film It's a Wonderful Life and as J.R. Ewing's mother on Dallas for at least one season. Parents remember her as the always empathetic Donna Stone, the wife of the pediatrician and the mother of an expanding family in The Donna Reed Show, which captivated Americans from 1958 to 1966. But after remembering other aspects of her personality, we cannot deny the fact that she was much more than an average housewife. A gentle yet strong woman who could fit perfectly in any role. She portrayed every good girl and bad girl character so beautifully that even failure turned into success for her. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Donna Reed and Jimmy had the tension between each other. They were not the only pair who had problems while filming. How Sid Cherise Stole the Show from Debbie Reynolds in Singing in the Rain Watch this video and find out.